the um, sheet that's going around with your names on it. Um, just a little bit about myself and my company. Um, we're Fibernet. We do um, a lot of web hosting. We also <laughs> offer SEO options. Um, about myself, my name is Aubrey Moulton, and I've done SEO for six and a half years. Um, I was taught by Adam Sorensen, who's over in the corner. He's done it for 12 years. So we've been in the industry for a long time. Um, I've also worked with PR companies and as an account manager um, and with social media. So today, um, by show of hands, how many of you have a website? Good, awesome. Um, so you're probably familiar with what SEO is, um, or you've at least heard about it. SEO is different from other marketing channels in that it's not PPC, which is pay-per-click. You're not paying a certain amount to get a certain amount of clicks. You're not paying for um, you know, sponsored ads on a website when you go to the website and on the left-hand sidebar there's an ad. It's an, that's not what SEO is. Okay. SEO is getting you ranked in the most natural and organic way possible. Um, so on to the next slide, this is how SEO affects your traffic. Um, so what an organic search visit is, is when someone searches for you know, real estate Utah and they happen to come up on your website. Um, Direct visits would be if you tell someone, this is my domain, and they type it directly into the, into the um, website. <coughs> Referral visits is when you give out a business card or you, um, someone refers you from their website. That's how you get there. Um, paid visits would be PPC like we talked about. And then social visits is Facebook. Um, I actually personally believe social visits are getting higher than this pie chart actually represents because of the growth of Facebook and networking and LinkedIn. Um, so if we go on to the next slide, this is, um, you guys have already done the, a majority of this if you have a website, but to begin you need to purchase a domain and a hosting plan, and then you need to do what's called on-site optimization and off-site optimization, and then you need to set up social media and other marketing platforms. Uh, if we use Fibernet as an example, um, if you go to the next slide, um, users tend to look at a website in a Z formation. So what they do is they look at your logo, they go across and they see your call to action or your phone number. Um, that is critical to your success, to have a phone number, an email, your contact information up in the right hand corner, that's where people look for it. Um, and then they'll come across down the Z and see your content and then go across. If we were um, able to go lower, you'd see that we have a footer with navigation. That's another important thing is to have proper, um, have proper pages for each specific thing. So for example, if you have different counties that you serve, it would be in your best interest to create a page for each county and explain um, you know, the different benefits of that county or that city, um, what that city has to offer, and that way you are targeting certain keyword phrases on that page um, and not just flooding your home page with, here's every single city and county that I serve. Um, okay, if we go on to the next slide, um, this is what you need for your on-site optimization. And if you guys have any questions at any time, just feel free to, to interrupt me, but you need um, what's called title tags. What a title tag is, is it's a 65 character limit of what your site is about. You know, Marie is a realtor for Utah County and surrounding areas. Has to be short and concise, but that's what the search engines are going to use to know what your site is about. Did you say 65 words or characters? Characters. characters. So just a really, really short, probably about 10 to 15 words. Um, and that's what they use, like, when you do a Google search and it shows someone's byline, that's a title tag. Um, and then metadata, um, if you get into the back side of your WordPress, if many of you have WordPress, you're able to fill in your metadata, which is your, your tags of um, the cities that you serve, that you're a realtor, um, the counties that you serve, what type of realtoring you do. Um, and then you're, you get into content. Um, content is really important, especially on your homepage. You don't want to flood it with too many, um, too many things. So like I said, if you serve different areas, make a different page for each area, and your biggest area, have that be your homepage. Um, I would recommend at least 500 words on your homepage. 
um, and use your keyword phrase at least two to three times within. So, you know, Utah County Real Estate, Utah County Real Estate. Because what happens is Google has search engine spiders that are going to come and they're going to index that content. And if they see that phrase multiple times, they're going to realize that your site is relevant for that phrase and rank you higher for it. How many times did you say? Um, about two to three, just as much as it sounds organic. Um, and you can have other phrases there too, like the, the areas you search, but I wouldn't list too many because you don't want to do what's called keyword flooding. You know, if you're, if you're feeling like you have so many things you're focusing on on your home page, split it up into different subpages. Um, if we go on to the next slide, um, this is what off-site um, off marketing options you have. Um, I put Google Places listing at the top because for you guys as realtors, that's going to be the most bang for your buck. Right now, um, Google Places listing, you can leave a review, you can, um, I mean, are, are you all familiar what a Google Places listing is? No. Okay, so say for example, you pull up Google and you search for, you know, food and aura. You know on the right hand side, it shows a map with little dots. That's a Google Places listing. So a Google Places listing is the fastest way to get your company ranked without having to go through the whole waiting for your organic rankings to go up. Um, what it does is it verifies your business as a placement and then your happy customers can go leave a review. The more reviews you get, the higher you're going to rank in Google Places. It's essentially Google Maps. Um, so I put that one at the top because it's something that I just want to stress to you guys the importance of. Um, there's also something called guest posting. What guest posting is, is when you write an article and you have it published on another realtor or home improvement site with a backlink to you. What that does is it um, doesn't necessarily have to be a local site that you're guest posting on. It's just the fact that Google sees that link and they index it and they see that you're getting people talking about you and it's just building the buzz about your company. Um, and then there's your social media outlets. Um, Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus, and LinkedIn. Um, I know they're doing a LinkedIn tutorial today, so I won't get too into that one, and I know you're probably all already on LinkedIn and busy with it. But I did want to talk a little bit about Facebook. Um, Facebook, I hear a lot of people being concerned about um, over-optimizing Facebook or posting too much on Facebook, or um, with my personal realtor, he was using his own Facebook to promote his listings. And a way to get around that is to make a Facebook page. Um, the benefits of making a Facebook page for yourself as a realtor is that you're not spamming all your family with all of these listings. And you get what's called uh, Facebook Insights. So it'll show you how many people are visiting your page. Um, if you post a listing, it'll show you how many people see that listing. Um, if you um, comment on things, you can see the interactions and you can see how, you know, the incline and decline rate of your Facebook page. So it's really important to actually build yourself as a brand, as a Facebook page. And then the other thing is, don't be afraid to over post on Facebook because Facebook has what's called edge rank. And what that means is you can have 200 friends on Facebook, but do you always see all 200 friends posts every day? No, you see the posts of the friends that you interact with. And so, don't be afraid to post even daily on your Facebook pages because you want people to see um, you showing up in their feed. You only have a limited time, probably five minutes, of showing up in someone's Facebook feed before you disappear. So the more you can get people interacting with your page, the more you're going to show up on their pages, and if they like something you post, you show up on all of their friends' pages. So don't be afraid to promote yourself on Facebook just as much as possible, even if it's you know, you read a good real estate article, share that. You see a good listing, share that. You know, if you're worried about promoting yourself, don't be, because there's so many people out there and so many business pages that it, you really need to be proactive on Facebook. When you're talking, um, and on your business Facebook yeah, page. Yeah, I, I, would, I would personally say build a, a business Facebook page because that way you have the insights of what's working and what's not. Because it gives you a report. You have to get to 50 likes but I don't think for any of you that would be a hard thing to do. You know, to share it with your family, friends, have them like it. You get Facebook insights, you get reports, you can set goals. It's just really, it's so much better than using your personal page because then your personal page can be about family and not so much about your business. So, um, if we go to the next slide, 
Um, I just wanted to share some social media stats as far as how many people are on these social networks. Um, like I said, Facebook and Google Plus and LinkedIn would probably be the most beneficial for all of you to be on. Um, and my role usually, because I tend to get a little bit lazy or busy with social media, is if I post something on Facebook, I go and share the same thing on Twitter and Google Plus and whatever other channel I have. I just make it easy that way. So um, if we, if you guys want to look at that for a minute, um, let me see where I'm at. Sorry. Okay. Okay. And the other thing to keep in mind is that most people are on Facebook during business hours, during working hours. Um, so share stuff Monday mornings or Monday afternoons. You know, nine to five, Monday through Friday. That's when you're going to get the most users. That's when like 20% of people, of all the people in the U.S are on some form of this social media. So share what you can. Instagram is nice because you can use hashtags. You can also use hashtags on Twitter. Are you all familiar with what a hashtag is? Okay. So I would definitely hashtag everything like real estate or house or the city that you're selling it in um, on Instagram or Facebook. So next slide. Um, so this is an infographic about um, just a little bit about social media marketing, what it is, how many people are on it, and the importance of it. Um, so we just wanted to show like the sheer numbers of how many people are using social media. So for you guys, <coughs> I'm gonna stress that Google Places and Google Plus to you, and then any other social media. I know it takes time, but it's time that's well, well worth it. Um, Facebook does still dominate the shares with 21%. Um, and then Pinterest and then Twitter. Um, Pinterest, you, it's up to you guys if you wanted to add that. If you guys already have enough on your plate, don't worry about it. But like I said, I use one social media channel and I post the same thing to all of them and I hashtag all of them. So um, just use it universally. And then um, Google Plus doesn't have as many shares, but it is starting to grow. Um, and it is something that that Google itself looks very highly upon if you use Google Plus. It helps build yourself as, a, as you as a brand. Um, and that's what you're hoping to do. And then the fastest growing with 53% growth um, is Facebook, and it's supposed to be by 2016. Um, if we go on to the next slide, um, this is a case study that we did by, this is an example from our company. Um, Humanize yourself. I know we get stuck in the, you know, be professional, but this is an example of a client that was upset that Blue Hosting's um, hosting was down and they were tweeting about us. And so we tweeted something funny back and we actually got a conversion out of that client. So don't be afraid to be a little silly because it shows that you're human. Um, you know, and it, I would say at least plan on being active on social media two to three times a week, if you can. Um, more if possible, like I said, you can post to Facebook daily, and it's not going to hurt your campaign at all. Um, and then, if we go on to the next slide, so this is the client I had, his name is Mike Dangerous. He had been doing SEO for two years, and he was really struggling to, to see results in the rankings. He's a, he's a wedding and event singer in Chicago. So what we did was um, I looked at his campaign and he was missing a Google Places listing. So I created a Google Places listing. We verified, you have to verify the address of it. And then you're able to optimize it and add pictures and add your hours of operation and add tags. And then people are able to leave Google reviews for you. And that's what's showing up right here, the 4.9. Um, those are people who have left positive reviews for him. But within two to three months of, of installing Google Places for Mike Dangerous, um, he was able to not only move up in the rankings, when I say rankings, he moved up in Google Places and like Google Maps rankings, which is really quick to do. He actually got four converted leads that signed up to have his band come sing. And that was really, really quick success for him. And that's why I wanted to stress the importance of Google Places to you guys, because that could be 
an overnight success without having to do all the grunt work of SEO that can be tedious and can be um, a long time. It can take four to six months to see rankings move. So, and how do we get here? How do we the, the Google, Google places. places. Yeah. Where, uh, where do we find that? So all you have to do is search for Google places, okay. and it will say get started, and then you fill in your information. Um, it's also a service that our company provides if you wanted us to optimize it, create it for you, we're more than happy to do so. Um, but it's really the best thing for your buck for getting clients and getting out there. And, and you know, if someone's searching for real estate promo and you're optimized for that on Google Places, you're going to show up in that little map on the right hand side. And that's going to be huge for you. Um, if we go to the next slide, you can see. There's Mike Dangerous again for a different keyword result. So um, even though we only put them in as Dangerous Mike Music, because you have to put yourself in as your name or your brand. Even though we only put him in for that, because he's optimized as an entertainment band and a wedding band, he's getting li listings for all these different keywords. And if you go to the next slide, there he is for Chicago band. So he's really happy. He's getting conversions. and. Um, that's basically Google Places for you. So does anyone have any questions that I can answer? Okay, you in the back first, sorry. Is that pay-per-click with Google Places? Or is it just in a field? Pay-per-click is different. Google Places is free. Um, it's, um, Google Places is when you search for like food in Orem and it shows up in the right-hand sidebar. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is you have to have a physical address. It can't be a PO box that you register. So you have to have a physical address. It doesn't hurt even if you use your home address because there's a checkbox that you can use that says, um, I serve outside of this location. So then they know that you know, you're a place, but you serve an area. So that's a real to put our office address. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can put your office address. We serve them. Yep. And then. So what if um, there's like 200 people in, in an office and they, two or three want to use that same address for I think in that case, um, it would be more beneficial to try and build your own brand on Facebook and on um, your website and doing a lot of guest posting and, and building your name there. You still can have your clients leave reviews. For example, there's, um, there's a hair salon that has like 90 plus Google reviews. But everyone always requests this one lady because she's the one that keeps getting mentioned in the comments. So you can ask them to help you, you know, to leave a Google review for you. But if if there's already a Google Places account for your company, then I would suggest building a Facebook page for yourself and marketing that and marketing your, your website through, you know, guest posting and through optimizing your website and through just other options. So and then is there any other questions oh, that I can guest post? I mean, are there sites or places that are you can? Yes. So, guest posting is really, really fun because you get to, uh, the purpose of guest posting isn't to be all about you. You want to teach something about real estate. Um, so keep that in mind when you're writing your content. Um, how you do it is you want to do at least 500 words, um, include an image, that's called rich media. It's also something that's good to have on your homepage of your site is an image. I'm sure you guys all have an image of yourselves, but just throwing that out there. Um, but yeah, so write 500 words, include an image, and then at the bottom have, you know, Aubrey Moulton is a writer for Fibernet, and in her spare time she enjoys hiking. There's your bio. Um, your bio is just really short, sweet, to the point. And then you go out to other sites. Um, you can, the beauty of being in real estate is you can, you can publish a, a guest post pretty much anywhere. You just have to find the blog. So I would be looking at like home blogs, real estate blogs, home improvement, construction. It doesn't have to necessarily be in this area. Remember that because Google's just going to see the link and going to know that people are talking about you in general and that will move you up in local rankings. So don't worry about like having to post from a blogger that's in Provo. It can be someone that's clear in Wisconsin. It does not matter with guest posting. It's just building your link portfolio. I think he's looking at particular sites like Active Rain, Yahoo, yeah. Real Estate, so there's, MSN, that kind of stuff. Yeah, anything goes. There's, um, there's one site called Blogger Link Up that I tend to use a lot, and it's where you can, you can publish 
you can say, I have a 500 word post available, and anyone can take it, um, and then they'll email you if they're interested. What I tend to do is um, I filter my searches, and how I do that is I filter it by quotes. So in quotes, I'll put guest post, and then next to that, you know, I'll do a space, and then I'll do um, really, or realer. And then you'll find sites that have, that have that in the, both the URL and in the content. So another one is, another good one is right for us. So I'll search right for us and then what your topic is. And then you can usually find within the first two pages a couple of people that would be interested. Um, and when I guest post, I tend to follow up. I send them an initial email, hey, I have a post written for you. Here's the title, here's the post, let me know what you think. I go back in two days later and I follow up. And then I go in two days after that and I follow up. And if they don't answer by the third follow up, then I move on to the next one. But it, it usually is the case that the second or third follow up they answer. So it's really important to make sure that you're keeping track of your interactions on that. But again, that is another service that we offer is guest posting. Um, but yeah, that that more so than blogging is going to help your um, your name out there. I would recommend blogging at least once a week on your personal blog just to give you something to promote on your Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn and, and stuff like that. Um, but more than once a week isn't really necessary. If you're going to do more than once a week, I'd rather you use that second post as a guest post. So, yeah, and then anyone else have any other questions? Right. There's still a sign-up sheet going around if everyone can just make sure that they um, filled it out. Sorry, I think we're way early with being done, but... Metatags. <laughs> so, metatags. If you eat, but I'm sorry, I'll have you explain that. Like, as an example, okay, if you do a metatag for counties, yep. what's the ideal way of doing it? Utah County, Sulphur yeah. County, or Da, 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 yep. Something, something, counties. Um, it really doesn't matter as far as using a singular or plural with meta tags. It's more the area that would matter. Um, so I would just put county. But you can switch it up. Like you can do Utah County, Salt Lake Counties, and then you're optimizing for both. Um, meta tags are what the search engines will grab to use as your description for your site. So. It's important to make sure they're at least filled out. Um, but yeah, it does a singular plural, it doesn't matter. I tend to use plural just because it covers both. So, and then I think there was another question somewhere. I was just gonna ask you, so what does your company offer and do? So what we offer and do is, Fibernet's been around for 20 years. We do um, posting, so we do a lot of posting options, but we've also started doing a la carte SEO options. So. For example, if you wanted to just buy a single guest post from us, you could. Or if you want to need to manage your entire social media guest posting, um, like website optimization, you could. It's, it's up to you how much you spend. But we have, if you look on our site and if you go to our booth, we have flyers that state what we do as far as SEO. Um, like if all you needed to buy was a Google Places listing and you wanted it fully optimized and done the right way, that's definitely something that we could do for you. So. So we focus on hosting, but we've recently started doing SEO and offering that as a service. So. <laughs> so, yeah, sorry guys, I think I'm a bit done early. If you guys have any other questions about SEO or how to market your website, I'm more than happy to answer, but. What are the, what are the things not to, you know, there's, there's no no's as far as what, as what to not to do. Yeah. Yes. I'm glad you asked because right now, um, SEOs, changes. yes, that's the one thing about SEOs. It's always fluid, it's always changing. Google tends to do about two huge algorithm updates twice a year. What an algorithm is, is it's their metrics of how to rank a site because you have to have some sort of metric of ranking a site. If you have two websites, they both have 500 words of copy. How do you know which one to rank higher than the other? And they do so based off of backlinks, based off of your site age, based off of a lot of variables that they don't make public. So it's kind of a guessing game for us. Keeps it interesting. But um, there is things that they have said strictly not to do. 
Um, a lot of those things are keyword flooding. Like I said, if you're over-optimizing your homepage for all your locations, break them up into different locations. And then just have your homepage be about you and what your real estate experience and you know, a couple of locations that you serve, but not all. Um, another thing they say not to do would be um, like paid advertisements or um, keyword spamming or getting me into the wrong type of links. If, if you look anywhere for SEO, you'll see that people are offering directory submissions and article submissions and bookmark links and those things used to work clear back in, you know, four years ago. But they don't work now, and they'll actually get your site either sandboxed, which is where you're penalized for a little bit, or penalized permanently. So you have to be really careful with how you're linking, and that's why I, I personally promote guest posting as the best method, because you're giving something of value to that blog and their readers um, as far as the content, and then you're getting something of value back, which is a backlink that's organic, and that you're not paying for, and that... Um, will really help your site. So I would stay away from, you know, bookmark links and submissions and stuff like that. That's not to say that um, that you can't bookmark things. I would suggest having social media plugins on your site. Um, there's one called Sociable. that's super easy to install on WordPress. And it makes it so anyone who sees your site, if they like a blog post, they can share it on their Facebook. It's also good to have um, buttons for people to be able to follow you on Facebook. So you kind of need both. You need them to be able to share your content. So put sociable on your blog and on your homepage put buttons to link to your personal Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn so that they can go and instantly follow you and stay up to date with you. So and like I said that's something that we can do as well is add buttons and hyperlink your stuff to to what where it needs to go. What is that? No, our stuff is actually really affordable. Most of our uh, most of our services are hundred dollars or less. Uh, we can get them done pretty quickly. The turnarounds like two or three days, if not less. So um, it's just it's different depending on what you're wanting to buy. Like if you wanted.